Johnny Carvaggio. We back on Smoke Sports. Um, I'm super excited. We are officially two weeks away on the 2021 NFL Draft. Great draft coming up. Some of the best quarterbacks. It's the best quarterback class, I'm going to just say, by far in a while. Justin Fields, Trey Lance, Trevor Lawrence, Mac Jones. This is, we got a couple guys going in the first round. First couple picks to be exact, too. So, oh, best DB driving a while, too. Deep wide receiver class. So this video, you know, I'm a defensive guy, so I'm going to just give my defensive prospects, my top 10 defensive prospects. Starting off with Penn State linebacker Michael Parsons. He opted out of the season last year due to family issues, I believe. Um, great kid, great competitor. My buddy go to Penn State, so I done been up there. He cool, he pretty cool dude. Um, 6'3", 256. He had a great pro day, ran a full full one. Did 19 reps on the bench, and I think that approved his stock. I mean, he was already going to be, a, I believe, a top 10. Well, this year, I think most of the people in the top 10 is going to be strictly offensive players, but him or Patrick Sertan in the second is going to be going in that top 10. They might sneak right in there, but like he's very competitive. He's uh, fast, too, for his size. Like I said, 6'3", like almost 250, moving. He's, he, gets, he moves sideline to sideline. Uh, great production the first two years. 191 tackles, six and a half sacks, uh, five pass deflections, and six force fumbles. He aggressive too. Like, like I say, he moves sideline to sideline. Be a great fit for an NFL team. He can play either the Sam, Will, Mike. He can play all three linebacker positions. He can rush too a little bit on the edge. So, and it's crazy because I seen him play in the All American game because my buddy. She walked go to Penn State and he played in the All American game too. And I actually played against him in high school. I believe it was eleventh grade. Yeah, eleventh grade, my spring. It was the spring of eleventh grade, going into that twelfth grade year, you know, he had seven on seven. And we had seven on seven at wise. And it's probably like my first time playing seven on seven. Like competitively, I ain't never really played until then. And we was going up against this team called PA Playmakers. They were sponsored by Battle. And they had a couple guys. They actually had a Shane Young on that team. He goes out of uh, Iowa State right now. Safety. And they had Michael Parsons. And I see him, I'm seeing him play like the game before us. So I'm like, they, they nice. They nice. And like, who was this big dude? Like, he he was big too in high school, like that size. He was playing receiver. So then we go up and play them. And I'm, I'm like, I ain't checking actually. Uh, my man checking him. And he caught a ball on him. I'm like, Man, he pretty big dude. He play receiver, tight end. And then he goes on the other side and plays corner. And I ain't gonna lie, he strapped my man too. Uh, I ain't gonna say he strapped, but my man know. He, he, if you know, you know. He strapped him, and I'm like, this dude nice. And then uh, I'm looking at all the like the battle teams that was there, and they mention him. And it was on Twitter. That's when Twitter was like hot. I do wasn't really still the thing back then yet. It was the one to break, so I they add him. I click on it, and I'm like, Michael Parsons, he's verified. And then I look him up, and he's number four player in the nation. I'm like, we just played against a five star, like number four player in the nation. I'm like, oh, I ain't even mad we lost to him. But yeah, he can be a great player in the NFL. So then next player, my favorite cornerback in the draft, Patrick Sertan, in the second. I'm. Look, he's a Jalen Ramsey type player. Um, very aggressive. He's really smart. Like he's smart, and he, he started all three years too. And he's at Alabama. He had 111 tackles, 25 pass deflections, four forced fumbles. And like I said, he's like a he's like your pro style. Like he's a pro ready corner. Like plays just like Jalen Ramsey. He's a real good zone cover zone cover corner. Like they say a lot about his man, but I think his best is playing in the zone. But um, yeah, he's real physical. He can tackle real good. You see 111 tackles over three years. He got some, that's some better than some linebackers. So, yeah, I think he'll be the first DB off the board. And like I was saying, not gonna, I might not be no offensive players, I mean, no defensive players going in the top 10, but 
If anything, I would see Atlanta taking him at number four or Cowboys taking him at eight because both of them need a, a corner, especially Atlanta. Last year, they, they secondary was horrible, and they need him. And his father is Patrick Sertan Jr. He played in the league for a couple years, played corner two, and also was his coach. And he ran good, 4 4 6, bench 18 times, 39 inch vertical. Gonna be another great kid. Pro bowler the second year, I say. But yeah, easily first round talent. And then number third player, the team up north. I'm a, you know, I'm a house day fan, so yeah. Quetty Pay, Edge, player from Michigan. Um, He's pretty, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. He's pretty good. Uh, explosive, a little twitch player, so. He's gonna be good in a good off a good defense that has an edge that uses the edge rushes a lot. So like I say, like a uh, mm, Miami who have really a need of edge players. So Miami and uh, the Raiders. And he ran a five, four five four five four bench thirty six. So he wrote thirty six reps on the bench two twenty five. So he's a strong kid. Uh, he got quick hands, but he only played nineteen games the three years at uh, Michigan. But he's still gonna be a good player and I think in the league. Once he just gotta go to a good team so they can develop him and then the rest is history. And number four, this is my favorite player in the whole draft. Jeremiah Owosu Koromora, 6'2, 250, no, 221. Hey, he's a linebacker. But I mean, I, I, he's a tweener, what you call a tweener between a linebacker and a safety. He's in a he got a safety body, but he plays linebacker. And boy. The kid can play football. He's aggressive. He's fast. He can cover slots too. Like I, I forgot what game I was watching, but he's he's covering the slots. He had a good pick against I think it was Navy or Navy or Pittsburgh. He had a nice pick on a, a slot receiver. And it's not it's not that many linebackers, especially on the going up to the pro level, coming out of the draft that are that big, that they can move like that, and be able to check. Uh, a slot corner, especially in the ACC. The ACC got some pretty good receivers in that uh, conference. And he had 134 tackles, 7 pass deflections, 10 sacks, 5 force fumbles. He's very aggressive. Like, woo! I'm, I'm going to show a couple of hits on here, too. Like I said, great ladder. He's not one of them stiff guys that's 6'2", 220. Plays fast and physical. And I'm hoping, I've seen a lot of I've uh, seen a lot of people draft boys have them coming to the football team, and we need that type of player on our defense. We don't have that that pretty pretty much elite linebacker yet. We got a bunch of like uh, experienced inex experienced guys. We got John Bostick, uh, Cole Holcomb, uh, another. He's solid though. He's solid, but I think we need we, that's what we're missing a linebacker on that defense. Our D line's perfect. Our DBs are cool. We just need that one. Elite linebacker, and I think our defense is complete. We got a corner too, uh, William Jackson the second. So my number fifth player, a corner out of VTAC, Caleb Farley, who also opted out of the season uh, due to family issues too. I think because his father he opted out, but he's a big long quarter, about six two and a half, almost six three, one ninety seven. Hey, he will reroute you, and he can tackle too, and got phenomenal ball skills. Uh, this is two seasons playing at. V Tech, he has six interceptions, 19 pass deflections, 56 total tackles, and like I said, he reroutes you. Big, long, physical corner. He ran well, too. I actually didn't actually participate at the uh, pro day in V Tech because he had just got a surgery, but it was word on the street that he ran a 4 2 8 right before his surgery, but I don't know how accurate that is, but if that's true, 6 2. <laughs> 197, almost 200 pounds running a 428. Look, that's crazy. But great team. He's going to be a great player. I hope he goes to the team that really needs the corner. So I'm looking at that. I think who has the, I think they were 15 or 16, but that later back end of the first, the first round, past 10, uh, the Patriots need a corner. And what's the name? Pat P's gone from Arizona. So I think that's going to be where he fall, ends up falling. My number six player, Jalen Phillips, edge out of Miami. He's compared to Mac Crosby. He's about 6'6", 260. He ran good, too. He ran a 4'5", 6 at his pro day. Um, he's a transfer, too. He transferred, played the first two seasons. He was number one recruit in the class 2017, too. A five-star coming out of Cali. Uh, he played his first two years at UCLA. He was injured a little bit, 
but things didn't really work out there. So he went to Miami for one year this past season. He finished the fa the past four games, last four games, 11 total tackles for loss, six and a half sacks in four games. And their their D line was pretty deep too. They got a couple kids too that's uh, first round prospects too, second round, first round, second round prospects. Uh, he's a good run stopper. He he can put his hands on that tackle, get right to the ball. Had a total of 86 tackles his whole career, five peak pass deflection, 12 and a half stacks, eight at Miami, and one interception. Um, great kid. Like I said, he's going to be a still. Like I said, he's a great case. Uh, he's going to be a still in this draft because he might fall. He might even. It's a possibility he might fall out this, the first round just because how deep this draft is. But he should be the first edge off the board, if anything, besides Quiddy Pay. I think Quiddy Pay is going to go first uh, for Michigan to him and for Miami. So. Yeah, I hope he goes to a great team. Has a good. I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna be mad if we grab an edge in the draft, and I wouldn't be mad at him and the uh, football team picking him up, even though we don't really need an edge. But great player, moves fast, and uh, gonna be a first round prospect for sure. And at number seven, my boy Jason Owe, edge out of Penn State. Uh, he's, he's an interesting player because a lot of people are saying he's still raw, which it is true. He doesn't have that much experience. He played two years at Penn State. He didn't really start that. He started his uh, second year, which is the rare, was the was the Kobe year. But I mean, he didn't have no sacks that year. But I mean, he only played like five or game, five or six games. The, the Big Ten, the Big Ten was the kept getting COVID. A lot of teams kept getting COVID, so I mean, he played six games. But look, he blew out. He blew away his pro day. Ran a four three six at six five two fifty seven. Uh, Broad jumped 11 2, and I think he benched by like 21 reps. But his weight room, he's really strong too in the weight room. And you can see that on film, it translates right to the field. Uh, he can get all blocks easily. He's a quick he's a quick twitch type player, and he's going to be a great pass rusher uh, and a good defense. Um, but he's going to be a starter eventually, but I think the first couple years he's probably going to be used for pass rush. But once they develop him more, but. He's e easily gonna be a pro bowler, and Jason Owe. Yeah, things will go. I I've been seeing a lot of boys saying later first round he might fall to the second, but whoever gets him, ooh, I'm telling you, that's a great, that's a great pickup because you can develop him, and then he has. You can't. One thing you just can't teach is size, and you can't teach speed, and he has all of that. So, Jason Owe out of Penn State, he a great player in the NFL. My number eight player. As, uh, uh, originally, I had Quiddy, uh, not J.C. Horn, a little bit higher uh, on my top ten, but then I redid. I had did my top ten a few times, but J.C. Horn out of South Carolina, sneaky kid. I didn't really know a lot about him until this year, to the season. He opted out like the last couple games, but I had seen his tape against Alabama. Played good against Alabama. He played good against Devontae Smith. Um, 6'1", 205. Ran pretty good, ran 4.39, jumped 41 and a half inches, and his, his, last, his last name does not for me because his father, Joe Horn, played for the Saints. Uh, was a Hall of, he's in the Hall of Fame, too, for the Saints. Uh, big corner, great. He's probably the best man cover corner in the drive. Plays pretty much. You can put him in any, any screen, though. Like, he doesn't have to be just in the man cover. Uh, defense. You can put him in cover one, cover two, cover three, cover four. But like I said, put him in anything. He'll he'll be good. And I think he's a day one starter. Him, Pat, him, Pat Sertan, uh, and Caleb Farley is day one starters. I wouldn't. I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, he play he has great technique. Whether that's press, zone, whatever. He has great technique and he can tackle well too. That's the thing about this draft. A lot of these corners can tackle pretty well. And like we haven't seen really in the past. Past couple drives, uh, he had 100 tackles, 23 pass deflections, two interceptions, two forced fumbles. They say he lacks ball production, but I mean that's going. He probably doesn't get. The, I don't think he's the ball thrown a lot to him, but that. So number nine, we got Trayvon Morris, Merritt Morris, out of TCU, 6'1", 202, ran pretty decent for us, 84.5, and he's the best safety in this draft. We won't say that. The most athletic. He's a ball hawk. Great ball production. Seven interceptions out of three years. Two and a half, two and a half, three years. Uh, he run the Jim Thorpe Award, too. And Jim Thorpe Award, he run it over 
some good DBs. So he run it over JC Horn and Patrick Sertan a second. And the Jim Thorpe Award is the best DB in the country. And seeing how Bama had a great season and won a national championship, he run that over <laughs> the, the protected first DB off the board. Psh, that's pretty good. And I think he sets the tone too when he runs downhill. When coming downhill in that alley, he gonna put a hit, he gonna put a he gonna put a lick on you now. And has great eyes reading the quarterback. You something you ain't really seen in a while. And they compared him to Jesse Bates, because Jesse Bates coming out, he read the quarterback eyes pretty well. I think he had he was the probably the best safety in his class too coming out, like when it comes to reading the quarterback eyes, cause a lot of safeties don't read the quarterback eyes pretty good. And that's for, that's one key thing you gotta do at that free safety position. And he's a ball too. Last person. I didn't really know too much about AZ Ajari, uh, Ajari, yeah, linebacker out of UGA. Um, he kind of plays like an edge too and plays outside linebacker. You can put him, you can put him in any position too. The only thing is, you put him on the edge, he's a little bit undersized, about 6'2, 240. Most, most tackles in the NFL are 6'6, 6'7, 6'5. Most edges are like, you know, 6'5, 6'6. But then again, you got some players in that, players in the league that are shorter. That's we're doing pretty good. Uh, he was the first freshman under Kirby Smart era to be a captain. He shares the blocks pretty good for his size too. Like he run through, he run. I've seen him a couple plays run through a guard. Uh, Sixty-seven tackles, two pass deflections. Like I said, he's undersized, but if he gets put in the right type of defense, I don't think that's gonna matter. And he's just gonna have to use that smaller size to an advantage instead of a disadvantage. But oh yeah, he, he had twenty-eight. He's a pretty strong kid too. Uh, ran. Ran right decent four six. I mean, not blazing speed, but he went not really slow. He had, I say, his speed is better on film. That's that's what a lot with a lot of these kids. I'm not really high on forty yard dashes and all that. Yeah, that's it's cool and all, but can you play football? And a lot of these people in this draft <laughs> can run good and they can play football, so that's a plus. So I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Next episode, I'm gonna give you my top ten offensive prospects. Great, a lot of. Hey, just, I got Justin Fields. Let me tell y'all who I can sneak peek. Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence, Kyle Pitts, a couple guys. I ain't gonna give you the whole top 10. That's for the next video. But appreciate y'all for tuning in. Smoke Sports Network. Please subscribe. Follow me at Smoke Sports when we done. Boy, must be lying. Be lying. Score every time I ain't punk. Score every time when we step out and pop out and clean up the bank.